Lord, my brother is amorous on here, huh? and I've drawn her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow her, but one mask remains. This is Claudio, looking by his bed. Or do not see your Benedict. Oh, you know me well, I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother with love. He is enamored on him. I think he is waiting for me. She is no equal for his birth. She will the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his effect. So did I do. He swore that he would marry her tonight. <laughs> Let us to the banquet. Thus answer I in the name of Benedict, but hear this ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things save the offices and affairs of love. Therefore, all hearts in love, use your own tongues. Let ever I negotiate for itself and trust no agent. For beauty is a witch, against whose charms faith melteth into blood. This is an accident of hourly proof, which I mistrusted not. Therefore, farewell, Euro. Count Claudio! Yeah? Go and go with me. Whither? Even the next willow about your own business, Count. What fashion will you wear the garment of? About your neck? Like a user's chain under your arm, like a lieutenant's scarf. You must wear it one way, for the prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy of her. Why, well, that's spoken like an honest troll. So they sell bullocks. But did you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. Though the boy that stole your meat, and you'll be the boss. If it will not be, I'll leave you. Alas, poor earth thou. Now will he creep into sedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me, and not know me, the prince's fool. Ah. And maybe I go into that title because I am married. Yea. And so I'm apt to do myself wrong. I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, ah, Signor, where's the Count? Did you see him? Told you, my lord. I have played the part of Lady Fame. I found him as melancholy as a lodge in a wood. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady. And I offered him my company to a willow tree, either to make him up a garland as being forsaken, or to bind him up a rod as worthy of being whipped. Who be whipped? What's his fault? It's a flat transgression of a schoolboy who, being overjoyed with finding a bird's nest, shows it his companion, and he steals it. Wilt thou make it trust a transgression? The transgression is in the stealer. He had rather been missed the rod of the maid on the garland too. The garland he might have borne himself, and the rod he might have bestowed on you, who, as I take it, have stolen his bird's nest. I will but teach them to sing and restore them to the owner. Their singing answers your saying, and by my faith you say honestly. The lady Beatrice had a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. A oak, for with one green leaf on it would have answered her. My very advisor began to assume life and scold with her. She told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the princess jester, that I was duller than a great thaw, huddling jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me, that I stood like a man in mark, with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poignant, and every word stabs. If her breath were as doubtful as her terminations, there were no living air. She would infect to the North Star. I would not marry her she were endowed with all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. <laughs> she would have made Hercules have turned spit, yea, and have left his club to make the fire too. <coughs> no, stop not of her. You shall find an infernal Ache in good apparel. I would to God some scholar would find her. For certainly, while she is here, a man may live as quiet in hell as in a sanctuary. And people stay upon purpose because they would go thither. So indeed, all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Look, here she comes. Will your grace command me now? Any service the world said, I will go down on the slightest errand to the antipodes that you can devise to send me up. But you are too thick up in the furthest inch of Asia. 
in the life of Pastor John's book. Let you hair up the great chance really to give you any emphasis to the pygmies rather than all three wives tied breaks with this heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I have no point for none, none but to desire your good company. <laughs> God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Such assistance as I shall give you directions. My lord, I am 